So all morning has been a setup for this conversation. It's all building up to the crescendo today, which is a discussion with Carolyn. I can't thank you enough uh, for being here. We're thrilled to have you. So Beatriz set you up. Uh, it totally. was a beautiful setup, and it's impressive because she came off of a red eye, and I don't think the two of you talked about it. Um, but let's talk for a second about engaging millennials around the world. And maybe for folks in our audience that aren't familiar with UNICEF and your role, Carol, start there. And let's link it right to that message from Beatrice. So Beatrice, great setup. The only thing I disagree with is there is a brand that does it right, and it's called UNICEF. But, um, <laughs> but it, that's, that's all right. We'll, we'll talk on the side. But so UNICEF, we're the organization that does whatever it takes to save a child anywhere in the world. 190 countries, 12,000 boots on the ground, immunize half the world's children, have saved more children than anyone else ever has. <laughs> so we do it right. It's, it's tough to follow that uh, with a yeah, question well, that a means little. anything at all. But um, let, me, let me try. So I was a UNICEF kid. Um, so ha I know you love to ask this question. I'm going to steal it. How many folks in the, in the audience and the folks at Turner could raise their hands as well virtually? How many folks carried a UNICEF box on Halloween when you were a kid? Trick or treat for UNICEF. Trick or treat for UNICEF. So I did it, but we're not carrying boxes anymore. So tell us a little bit about Kid Power and the way we're engaging technology-centric millennials and children in your cause. So part of what Beatrice said, I totally agree with, though, you know, especially with Gen Z, but even the tail end of Gen X, they don't just want to create, they want to direct. And it's not about educating them, it is about engaging them. And Trick or Treat for UNICEF was the first campaign of kids helping kids in this country. And today, one in 10 Americans has actually trick or treated for UNICEF. That is the brand power of UNICEF. But we recognize that kids today are not trick or treating the way they used to, and that it was a little flat for them compared to other things they're doing. And about a year ago, two reports fell on my desk at the same time. One that said one in four American children is underactive, and that the obesity and other issues that we're facing in this country, the contributing factor is our kids are not moving. And the other report said one in four children around the world is severely malnourished. So 16,000 kids die each day of causes we can prevent, and half of them are related to something to do with the fact that they're malnourished. So we sat there and we said, one in four, one in four. How do we put it together? Take what American kids are wasting, use it to save lives around the world. And we came up with this great little thing called Kid Power. And there's, I'll put my little props up. But what Kid Power is, and we tried to sell it to a manufacturer. We couldn't. We started a startup inside our own nonprofit. We created our own low-cost fitness band for children. It is, um, goes into initially Title I schools where 75% or more of the kids themselves are on some kind of a food assistance program. We, we challenge the kids to take 12,000 steps a day. We give the teacher a tablet preloaded with information about kids around the world, about activity, and about giving back and philanthropy. The kids are challenged 12,000 steps. For every 2,500 steps they take, they get a point, and it lights up, and it buzzes. And as someone who wears one, I can tell you it's very exciting when that happens. <laughs> and for every 10 points they earn, UNICEF releases a packet of ready-to-use therapeutic food to a starving child overseas. So the motivation to the American child is if you get healthy and active for three to four weeks, you will save the life of a child overseas. So we built the band because nobody in the marketplace wanted to undercut their sale price and have a low-cost band. We found a manufacturer. Then we had to get it into the schools. And we took it on cold calls to two industries who thankfully bought. The first was to Lucas Films, to Kathy Kennedy. And truly, the pitch was, Kathy, you're a mom. I'm a mom. Children are dying. What are we going to do? And Lucas Films came through. And Star Wars is our partner. We are the Force for Change project. And the second was Target Stores, because while this is great that it goes in the schools, we also wanted it to be available to every child everywhere if you had the ability to purchase it. So today there are 140,000 American children wearing the band. They've already walked enough steps to save the lives of over 5,000 children around the world. And our goal is 1 million kids wearing the band with 1 million children around the world being saved by them. The one you buy in the store comes with a password-protected app. By a year from now, though, it will also be band agnostic, so you can do it from your smartphone. But it allows you to take what the kids are doing in a classroom, going on missions, 
and do it at home at your dinner table or do it actually not at the table because we want the kid moving. But each mission is hosted by a recognizable athlete or star or celebrity. Maya Moore did one. Um, Alex Morgan did one. Uh, the Star Wars cast just released theirs. Pink is the national spokesperson on the campaign. I will tell you the band has been in the top 10 sales every week since it came out. Um, we actually, it was out of store within four hours after Pink announced it on Good Morning America. So it's the gift that saves a life. So you just rattled off some of the most powerful brands in media and entertainment, right? We talked Star Wars. Uh, we're talking Pink. I know Alyssa Milano has been a brand ambassador for Absolutely. UNICEF for years. Mm -hmm. um, talk about how you think about the power of those partnerships and those brands, because you really look at our industry from a very, very different perspective. We also, we were the first organization to ever use celebrities as a spokesperson, starting with Danny Kay and Katherine Hepburn. So, you know, you start with two iconic figures and you learn very quickly the power of having someone, excuse me, Audrey Hepburn, I said Catherine, um, the power of having... Either one of those would have been would pretty be nice, good. But yeah. Audrey was really remarkable. <laughs> the power of having a recognizable face. And we have also learned the power of that face being an athlete as opposed to a, a stage celebrity. And that kids really respond to, to athletes overwhelmingly strongly. Um, but we need the networks. We need the media channels. We need the web, you know, in order to get our message out. But it couldn't be flat. I totally agree. You have to speak through, not to. And we learned early on, we needed the kids to tell us how to do it. We know the other big tech advance for us is called um, You Report. We launched this in Uganda. We in took it out of Uganda during the, um, the crisis with Ebola by giving it to kids in Liberia so that they could report via their smartphones. Um, and in many places where you won't find a TV and you won't find a computer, you will find a phone. And the kids could report when they started to see symptoms of the disease so we weren't dependent on waiting till somebody was really ill to try to get something done. So we started distributing the ability of this app. Today there are over a million kids on the app now. But it became a means by which we also can pull kids. We have more data on what kids want to know than any of you in this room right now. Um, but in Uganda, well, excuse me, in Liberia, as we went out, we asked a question about school access. And what we got back was that access wasn't the issue. What we learned was the number of teachers trying to force young children into sex for grades. And that enabled us to immediately get the government to respond to an issue we would not have even known about and then also to get counseling to all the kids who were victimized. I mean, it was an immediate, within a week turnaround on a major subject. So, Carol, when you think about um, the reach of UNICEF and the work that you're doing now, you've been with UNICEF as the CEO for 10 years mm -hmm. in, the, in your role today. What surprised you today versus what you saw when you joined the role 10 years ago? I think the, the, the point that Beatrice made about the creators I think, you know, we've always known it is about engaging kids in the decisions that, that they have to have the results from. But I don't think we understood the power of the voice children would have once the web came about. You know, I had the privilege to sit with um, Sir Tim, and I'm trying to think of his last name, one of the creators of the web the other night. And I asked him the question, you know, is the web what you thought it would be? And he said, well, we didn't think about what it would be. We, we made it open source so it could become whatever it would be. And I took that back and I'm trying to conceive now our organization that way. Let's stop thinking about what we think it should be. Let's create what it, what it will evolve into. Let's create the platform that allows it. And when I listened to all of the presentations this morning, I th that thought was in my head that we have got to find a way to, first of all, switch a paradigm for mom. You know, those of us in the room looking at the age group in the room that remember when there was that big move, TV was unhealthy for us. Don't let your kids watch TV. TV is bad. Big worry on the part of mom. And Sesame Street really shifted a paradigm. They said they went from, should you allow your children to watch TV? They shifted that question to, what do you allow your child to watch? That's the same shift that's taking place right now in technology. There are big debates about how much technology is good for children, and the question shouldn't be how much, it should be how it's used. And that's, I think, the role of all of us in this room. So that's a great uh, setup for the folks in this room uh, for any questions that you may have for Carol. So I'll give you that setup so you can think about it. We won't give you the awkward pause for a moment, but let me 
Let me ask you one, one follow-up uh, that we talked about when we prepared a bit for this discussion. Uh, what brought you to UNICEF? Why, why take that role? I um, am the child of a Holocaust survivor, and uh, my grandfather was on a boat called the SS St. Louis, which wasn't allowed to dock anywhere in the world. But my mom came to this country at the age of six on a boat with her brother, who was four, at a time when the country was receptive to unaccompanied children arriving on its shores. And she was raised in an orphanage on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Today, there are more children on the move than in any other period since World War II, unfortunately, in a world that's not quite as receptive to them. So that's why I took the job that I have. So we talk at uh, those of our partners and colleagues in the room uh, know this, and many of our clients and friends know this, but PwC's purpose that we articulate to our, our colleagues and, and partners around the world is that we want to solve complex problems and build trust in society. And Perhaps there's no more complex and compelling problem than children on the move who need food, who need nourishment, who need care. Uh, so uh, thrilled to have you Thank here you. today, thrilled that you took the role. Let's uh, see if there's questions in the audience for, for Carol and her application of uh, media to solve a really important challenge in the world. The other piece that I'll add in, um, is the other point that Beatrice made, I could not reiterate more that the consumer is looking for corporate social responsibility and is looking for the ways in which you are helping the world. And in Kid Power and in all the other programs that we do, we have these wonderful national sponsors, but then we have local components in every city in the United States as well. And we look for those engaged corporations that we can use our power of our brand to promote as well. Great. Beatrice, you had a question. Absolutely. 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 I think we have a question on this side of the room. One major piece is you operate across multiple generations and, you know, in, a, in an area where you, you express yourself that you have a lot of information on um, the younger audience especially. Um, but in the area that you operate, a big piece of that is trust. And how do you really establish that um, through all the different areas of um, how you're putting out your message and communicating? Probably the hardest thing is trust for an organization whose work is not in your backyard. You know, so a couple of ways we establish trust. One is our obviously the external ratings that we have been able to maintain now for 65 years, um, all of the highest ratings from all the external raters. Secondly, is financial transparency, the ability to to you know have it be obvious to the public that 10 cents of your dollar goes to our indirect expense and 90 cents to the cause. Thirdly. Proven results. You know, we are on the verge of eradicating polio. We are on the verge of eliminating um, maternal and neonatal tetanus. We were able to respond and combat in very quick ways the crises that are arising with other diseases around the world. I mentioned that 16,000 kids die each day. In the 1980s, that number was over 35,000 children dying each and every day. We have more than half that number. And at the same time, the world's population has tripled. So theoretically, had we done nothing, over 100,000 children would be dying each day under the age of five of causes we already know how to prevent, but we just weren't getting to them in time. And we've got that number down to 15. And the, 
the, you know, the slogan in our office is, I believe in zero. We're not stopping until we reach zero. Um, but trust is an everyday thing. It's not a once in a while. You know, the, the idea of how does trust fit with our brand has to be part of absolutely everything that we do. It's a great close, so I'm going to take advantage of that message. Uh, for everybody that's uh, watching us on the webcast or here in the room, Carol's Twitter handle is on the, on the uh, screen. Follow Carol, learn more, hear more, do more. Uh, I think we all have an opportunity to work with, with Carol and her team to, to do more. So really, really pleased to Thank have you, you here. So thanks so much, and uh, have a great thanks. afternoon.